Thank you. Hi, how is everyone doing? Good first day at Pi Ohio. Who else is new to Pi Ohio? Awesome. Oh, it's a newbie room, I like it. Um, so welcome here. Uh, we're going to talk about comments. The title of the talk is actually pound to do because that's what we all do all the time, right? Like, don't forget to add the comments. Uh, five tips for winning at code comments according to me. Um, speaking of me, I write a lot of software, usually with Python. Um, I've been doing that for a while now to the point where now when I don't see documentation, I remember my younger self and I'm not even that mad anymore. Um, I uh, have a website I occasionally maintain. It's a bit of a blog. Um, like once every three months or so. Um, I have uh, a GitHub account where occasionally some code makes it up. Some of it can be used in production and you won't regret it too much. Um, I have a Twitter account that I use literally the day before a conference, during a conference, the day after the conference, and um, next time I'm at a conference. Uh, I'm trying to get better at that, so feel free to help me. Uh, I have an email address I use. Please don't email me for a recruiter. Please don't give it to your recruiters. Um, I've got enough of that going on. And uh, the last thing is the slides for this will be on my site, which will be easy to find. Almost no one else has that name in the programming community. can't be that hard to find me if you Google me. And so enough about me. Let's talk about the talk a little bit. Uh, the talk itself is opinionated, opinions being predominantly mine. Um, it is hopefully a little helpful to you, at least a little bit. Uh, it should be hilarious because I am hilarious, um, evidently. Uh, it could probably also use some work. This is the third time I'm giving it. And I'll possibly give it a few other places. If you have the time to spare, I welcome feedback in any reasonable form you're willing to give it to me. Um, we're going to start with a quote. Uh, this is something I read somewhere, no idea where. Cannot find it to attribute it well enough, but I keep repeating it. And I say that bad documentation is worse than no documentation. Because if you have no documentation, you're going to look at the code, and at least you're working with the thing that's running. So at least you know that that's true, even if it's incorrect or wrong. Um, but if you have documentation, you're probably going to trust it a little bit. If it's poor in any way, you now have possibly a bigger hole to dig yourself out of, especially if it's incorrect, um, and then you spend an awful lot of time relying on it. So I care about it a lot. Uh, I delete a lot of documentation when it goes stale and when it goes poorly because I'd rather not have it. And so I'm trying to espouse some of these ideas that, uh, that are going to follow up, which have made me write better documentation, and so that if we all do it, we all have better documentation. Uh, this is a team sport, and if you haven't discovered yet, so should all learn how to play together. Um, before we get into the five tips, we should cover some basics. Make sure we're all talking about the same things. Uh, number one, first question is really, what are code comments? Uh, may seem obvious, but it's this stuff. Uh, sits at the end of a line in Python or on its own line in Python, spread out through a, throughout a bunch of code. Uh, it should hopefully provide more context. It is meant for people to read generally. Uh, it is meant to kind of, I don't know, it, it's, it augments the code for understanding. Computers generally don't care about it. Um, why are they important? Uh, they're important because code is written for humans. Uh, machines don't really care. Certainly for a language as high level as Python, uh, they don't really care. Um, this is for your fellow developers and yourself. Uh, speaking of which, it's very specifically for me, if you're writing it, for you, if I'm writing it, for you in six months when you've forgotten everything about it, uh, for all the people on your team who are going to have to deal with this when you take a week off to go to the Bahamas. Um, this is sort of for other people, um, and that context is going to come pretty important a little later in the talk. And so another quote, because apparently I'm on a roll, um, programs must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to ex execute. Uh, there are a few different forms of this quote. This is the earliest I could find. And I really do think that this is true um, because of how high level so many programming languages have gotten and how in the end they all really round down to the same bytecode to happen somewhere. It is really all for people, um, especially in the Python community where we don't even call it the language. We call it the community. We talk about the community. This is an event for people. There are no computers really attending this on their own. Um, I think it's pretty relevant to keep this in mind. Um, and comments are part of your code, so you should treat them the same way. So if this is remotely true for the code that executes, how true should it then be for the comments, right? So let's get to the actual tips, what you're here for. Uh, we're going to go over all five of them. Uh, if you really hate them, you can leave. Uh, I suggest you stay, because I'm going to go into more detail on all five of them, but that's up to you. Uh, the first one is that you should make comments stand out in your editor. Uh, we'll have pictures for this one, so it works great. Number two is you should explain the why, not the what. And we'll write an example together. Uh, number three is that you shouldn't fear the paragraph. Essentially, you shouldn't be so concerned about really, really short comments. And we'll have uh, some writing advice for that. Number four is that you should read these out loud to yourself. 
uh, regardless of how that makes you seem to people around you. And number five is that you should ask for help because you probably already do for code and you're probably not asking too much about your documentation. And so, let's get into it. Number one is make comments stand out. Um, this is this is actually excellent, but it's so terrible. It's a screenshot of my editor with my theme that I use, uh, and you can see that there are six, yeah, five lines of comments, six include the box string, and you probably can't read it at all on this projector screen, and it's not much better on my screen, I promise you that. Um, this is how the theme comes when you just download it and a bunch of people use it. This is another theme that does much of the same stuff. This is another theme that does the same stuff. You're probably starting to see the pattern of where I'm going with this. Everything else is really easy to read and the code is just kind of not, or the comments are just kind of gone. Um, the next screenshot hurts a little bit and is amusingly the one where the comments come out the most but nothing else is really legible and like this is way worse on a screen. I just love how uh, somebody's using this. You know someone somewhere who's using this. Um, if you use a light theme, that's okay. You're included in this. You also have the same problem. Uh, maybe to a lesser extent, but still it's present. Um, and the problem is that the uh, comment, the invisibility is what's going on here. You don't see the comments. They're there, you can ignore them and so on. It's sort of problematic. And it's problematic because when something is invisible, it's very easy to ignore. Um, and when the comments are invisible, you're going to ignore them because you're busy and you're doing other things and you're worried about the code and they don't get executed anyway, who cares? Or I'll update them later, you know, like to do add comments, also to do update comments. And when they're ignored, they suffer in quality. Uh, they get stale, they become problematic. Uh, you end up with two real problems. Uh, number one, outdated comments that are wrong, which are horrifying if you try to rely on them. Um, and then one of my favorites really is giant blocks of code commented out with no real reason why they're there, with other code replacing them, but you don't really know what's relevant or why. Um, I once had a file where an entire screen's worth was commented out. Like you could scroll through and it just looked empty for a little while. Um, I did not write the file, just so we're clear. I fixed it. Um, so going back to my screenshot, that's the, that's the problem and it sort of makes it easy to work with the code. I can read everything else on that screen and it's not necessarily super complex, who cares? Um, but I care because for one, there's actually a comment on there that I still have an issue with. This is from the request library, by the way, like from the current master branch. Um, and so I fix this in my editor like this and now you can read them. Now you read them first and now you will never scroll past something that's wrong or 45 or a thousand lines long that looks like that without noticing. Um, this doesn't really fundamentally change the code. It changes how you perceive it. This is supposed to make the comments a problem for you if they're problematic. It's hacking you, essentially. Um, the line that really bothers me is that middle one that says nothing on you, and it took me forever to figure out what the hell it means. I think they're going with the nothing, 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 because it's two nuns. And it bothers me because it should be N-O-T-H-I-N or N-U-T-H-I-N. This is just weird. So anyway, a little side note, but I discovered that in the process of making these screenshots. Uh, and again, if you use a light theme, no, I don't mean to start a holy war, you can fix it too. You just make them the opposite. I see someone doesn't like the white theme. I'll get it off the screen here. We'll we can go back to the uh, previous one. <laughs> but you can fix the problem, right? The idea is it should be very prominent. You want them to stand out. You don't want to ignore them. You don't ignore your code, presumably. So don't ignore the comments either. Number two is the why not the what. Um, first, we should define what they really are. Um, and to do that, we have to deal with an uncomfortable myth that's surprisingly common in the Python community. It's the code is self-documenting. You'll hear this from people. You'll hear this from some Pythonistas because it's such an easy language to read. That's often used in it. It's like, how hard can it be? It's just Python, right? Um, and there's a, an element of truth to that. The truth is that so code will self-document what's happening. Quite often it's easy enough to read a few lines of Python to understand what is going on with the data. That's usually not the problem for anyone. What you're really missing is the why. Like, why is this happening here as opposed to anywhere else in the code base? Why is it happening, um, why is it done this way as opposed to some other way? Um, why is it done at all sometimes? Which is what we're gonna cover in the example that comes from my real world experience. Um, so here's our example line. Uh, I wrote this line. I wrote it with no documentation, of course. Uh, it got merged into master, of course, because we had either no code review or very, very, uh, let's say, loose code review. Um, but the line itself is not very difficult. File data equals file data dot replace, eight backslashes with four. You don't even have to know Python to understand what's going on there. Um, if you're gonna do this wrong, you do it like this. 
you add an explanation of what's going on, and now you're, you're good, right? If you have a linter on like code to comment ratio, green check, and you're done. Uh, that's useless. That's actually probably worse because now you, your code literally weighs a whole line more from nothing. Um, if you find this line, like my coworkers probably did after I left that job, then you probably want to do something like this. Because exasperation comes to mind, um, if you are much younger, you'll do something like this. Uh, in the end, really, same story. Um, but if you actually want to fix the problem, then you write something like this. And I'll read it so not everybody has to. Uh, this file is submitted with backslashes escaped. The validator escapes them again, and the first round of processing does it again. So here we, we remove the last layer we don't actually want. Now you know why that line is sitting there in the middle of a file that's dealing with this data with nothing obvious to explain it. Now you at least understand that part. It may not be ideal, because that still seems crazy. Why would you be doing all that escaping in the first place then? But that's not really your responsibility at the moment. Now this line, I think, is professional grade, so to speak. I would hand this off to someone at this point in my career and not be too embarrassed. I'd probably add a caveat to make myself feel better <laughs> because I really like to-dos in case you haven't noticed. Big fan. Um, so yeah, you should explain the why, not the what. The what is generally fairly obvious. The rest of this talk is really mostly writing a device. Um, a little on the shorter side perhaps even. Uh, I spent a lot of time as a writing major when I thought I wouldn't do computer science. And then I didn't do either, but I ended up programming anyway. So it came in pretty handy. Um, but one thing that I learned is that there is such a thing as too brief, and I think programmers often are. We like to think that we can just use a half sentence somewhere to explain something and realistically we should probably write a little more. Um, brevity is a virtue, don't get me wrong, but until it isn't. Um, there are no bonus points for this, I hope. If your job gives you bonus points for short documentation, you should reconsider your relationship with your job. Uh, if your teammates think that you're cooler because you give them less code they have to review because you don't write any comments, you should teach them better. Um, trying to be polite here. But there is no benefit to this. Um, some of the best code I've ever seen has really more comments than code uh, because sometimes the reasoning is what's missing. So unless you're gonna write a book that you're gonna ship with it, you might wanna ship it in the source code or somewhere at least. Um, and it's really in this age of reasonably high bandwidth, if you are seriously concerned about that, which I know was the case maybe like 30 years ago. If you're worried about the extra weight of all the characters, please just don't. And so don't be unnecessarily brief. Um, number four, uh, it's gonna be tricky for everybody who works in an open office, myself included, uh, but you really should read what you write out loud. Uh, this goes for comments, not so much for code. Um, code is a little harder and it doesn't make as much sense but the words you write are written by other people. They're, they're gonna hope for sentences and it doesn't always have to be like, you know, great English or certainly if you have limitations in terms of your understanding of the language, but you should try. Um, and reading is especially important because language matters and how we perceive it or how we consume it changes how we perceive it. Um, when you read your words, I don't know if you know that, but you skim really quickly, especially if you just wrote them. You can have to the definite articles in a row and you will never notice. That will be there forever. Um, but if you are reading something for the first time, you're gonna notice them immediately and then it's annoying and problem and frustrating. Um, so hearing your words is sort of a second way for you to perceive them. Um, you also have to read much slower, even if you speak as quickly as I usually do. Um, and it, it adds sort of like another dimension of you trying to comprehend what the words are. And it just gives you a second chance to notice everything you probably did wrong with them. Um, it helps with a few things like typos. Um, much easier to notice if you try to read it uh, because sometimes you'll be like, what is that word? And then you realize you misspelled it. Um, helps with poor grammar because if the words individually make sense, you can also gloss right over them. But if you try to say them out loud, you will notice something's off. Um, and it really helps when it's like 11 or 12 at night and you've been there for a very long time. It's been a long week and you've finished whatever it is that you were struggling to do and you're trying to document because you're a good soul but you're just writing gibberish at this point, like, or vaguely <laughs> gibberish. Um, reading it, really great for that. Um, might not help you at the moment, but at least you'll know to stop and not continue. Um, so please find a way to read this. I know in an, uh, an open office it's tricky. I try to mutter them to myself sometimes, look around who has headphones, and if it's like reasonably clear in the vicinity, I'll chance it. Go, go outside, like go find a conference room. Uh, I work at a WeWork, we have lots of these silly little phone booths that are useless for anything other than literally being stuck in a box, but they're great for reading to yourself. 
Um, so I'll go and I'll read an entire PR worth of comments. If I read a lot of documentation, I'll do it all. I'll literally go over there and say it out loud. I haven't recorded myself yet. That's my next experiment. Um, try to do it. It's obviously not for everything. But if you're writing something complex, especially something with tricky words, it pays. Uh, if you're paying, putting in the effort to write documentation, you really should make sure that it's excellent. Um, and this will help a lot. Um, so yeah, please do read them out loud. Uh, and number five, the least obvious one, and yet really should be the most obvious, um, is that you should ask people for help. Uh, you should ask them for feedback, namely. You presumably all at least know you should be doing that with your code, even if you aren't. Comments aren't really any different. Um, even if you're just adding documentation in a pull request, it's not just a matter of like, oh, I just need someone to hit approve so I can merge it. Someone should read them and think through them. Um, and they're kind of different ways of, uh, like different groups of people you should feed it to for different reasons. Um, and so they're meant for others in the first place. Others is not you at that time, maybe you in six months, but everyone else is the others. And so you should kind of vet them by making sure that they're understandable. Um, if you ask people who are more senior to you or who have more experience with the domain or language, um, they'll be able to tell you if you're wrong, which you might be. Um, in addition to kind of all the typos and nonsense and all the other easy stuff. Um, if you show it to novices or people who are not familiar with the material, they'll be able to tell you if they're understandable. This might be the most valuable because if other people don't understand what you wrote, then you just wasted all that space and time and energy and talking to yourself. Uh, and everyone is going to pinpoint all the obvious issues. Um, this is just a second pair of eyes. Uh, we have rubber ducks on our desk sometimes for this reason. It's just, it's a team sport if you can use it. Um, Fun fact, I even make friends who I know who don't work with me do this for me sometimes. If I don't have a suitable teammate, I will copy paste the snippet on Slack, as long as it doesn't contain anything trademarkable or patentable, and just ask, does this make sense? Or ask them, explain back to me what I just put there. You'd be surprised how much nonsense you can write that makes sense to you, and then a very intelligent person with whom you'd love to work again just is like, what are you even doing? So. Don't test your relationships with them, maybe, but you know, if you have friends who are willing to spend and do it for them as well, then it benefits both of you. Um, and the last thing is that every great writer you've ever read has had great editors. Uh, we're none of us are geniuses. Um, if you look up quotes on editing, which I was looking at, but I was trying not to overdo the quotes too much, um, every single writer I could think of said something about the value of editors, usually with a quip about how much they hate them, but how valuable they are. And so if you're after the value, if you're after the quality, you shouldn't be shy of other people's feedback in that sense. Um, and I do have another quote because we're talking about writing. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut was maybe the most kind. Uh, he said, be a good editor. The universe needs more good editors. God knows. Uh, and I know my code bases do. I know my code certainly does. Um, and so do that. Conclusion, ask for help. Uh, quick recap of what we just talked about. Uh, number one, make comments stand out in your editor. If you make them a problem for yourself, you will fix the problem. I have faith in you all. Number two, explain the why, not the what. Write good code that explains the what, and then explain the why with your comments. Not always necessary, but when it is, do so. Don't be too brief. Don't try to win points on like the shortest word. You can omit every definite article and tense and everything out of it. Just write clearly the way you would want to write and read it. Uh, number four, read what you wrote out loud when you can. Don't get in trouble, don't get fired, I don't know. Don't say sensitive things out loud at a co-working space or profanity, probably. Uh, and number five, ask for help much as you would with everything else you do um, in every context. That's all I have for you today, it's a little short. Um, thank you for your time, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I wasn't too boring with the quotes. Uh, appreciate feedback, as I mentioned already. Um, slides will be up on my website in like 10, 15 minutes. Um, questions, comments, and everything else in the hallway, though we do have, I think, more time than I expected. I don't know if we could take a few. Yeah, sure, I'll take a few. Uh, and before I take the questions as a bonus, I'm organizing a conference in LA, hopefully one of these, probably not as smoothly run the first time. Uh, if you want some sunshine in February, wherever you live that may be desirable, just keep that in mind. There'll be a website, there's a mailing list there if you want to sign up. We're early stages, but we're surprisingly confident. Um, yeah, so happy to take questions now if anybody has any or comments or anything else. Yes.
Sure. So what I'm referring to here mostly is when you're done, right? Like what you're handing off. So in your dev, you do what you want. My code is full of comments outlining the steps, and then I fill that out with code. I quite often do that. Um, I wouldn't want to leave those because mostly they explain literally the thing that's going to happen. Um, but I've left co links to Stack Overflow questions where I didn't want to copy paste the entire, like, you know, two pages worth of something that explained, like, the reasoning behind some silly complex piece of logic or some, you know, nuance in whatever it is that I'm doing. So I think it's okay. Like, they're referential material. Um, in the end, it's the judgment of you and your team and the people you work with, kind of what to tolerate and how much. Where do you now just start, like, a documentation repo or whatever, and you put stuff there and you reference, like, look at this issue or PR or this page or something. Um, I don't think it's a problem if it's useful information. And during, like, kind of active development, you do you. Like, whatever works, that's it. So that's how I feel about them. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, code is not mine. The, sure. So the famous defense that the code is not my code. Uh, here, let's find the, this is, I think, the most legible version of it. Um, so the doc string is uh, kind of a special type of comment. I don't know how familiar you are with them, but they come with the object. The rest of the code is for the human to read. The doc string is kind of both. That's my guess. I literally copy-pasted this from the quest library because it was kind of small and big enough to fit on a slide neatly. <laughs> Um, and I figured it's probably not wrong because everybody uses requests, so it's really accurate. Um, I wouldn't really do that, but I write code fairly differently, and my doc strings are a lot bigger than that since I use them for auto-generating docs and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I, if you need to explain the first line in a function, then I guess that's what you're doing, and it's not like sort of general explanation. Um, I would wonder what your code does that you need to caveat it right away, so to speak, um, but I think... I guess it depends on the team and so on. I'm not on the request team, unfortunately, so, or fortunately, probably. Yeah. Right. Right, they serve slightly different purposes. So, I mean, if you need to explain the first section, um, keep in mind also, should have mentioned that there's a part of this function missing because it just didn't fit on a slide. Um, I didn't want to make it too small. Um, so, I'm going to guess that it sort of explains the general process. Now, why it's not in a bigger doc string, mm, I'm not really sure. That's up in the team. Feel free to submit an issue to the request repo and ask about it. <laughs> Please don't tell him I told you to do that. <laughs> uh, I think we could do a few more if anyone else has questions or comments or advice if you have helpful tips. I mean, in the end, sort of, you have to make that call, right? Um, I think it's important to hear it. If you can have, like, the max A command read it to you, that's fine. Or, like, another human, that's great. Um, I, like I said, I work at a co-working space, but we have our own office. And so in that office, we kind of have a talk about what like, you want policy at this point, unofficially. Uh, but I'll try to hide in a phone booth and say things. And in that same phone booth, I'll have a phone call with anyone at the company about anything. So it's sort of like, if I can't trust it, I can't trust it. Um, I wouldn't go to like a coffee shop and start reading out like everything. <laughs> it might be a little obnoxious, but. Uh, I, I guess that's what I was wondering. I know that you, you partner with Docs and stuff like that. Do you actually have your task in your brain and ask about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it as well. Like I hear the words said out loud. And I, th I think that's where it makes a difference for me. This is something we used to do when I was taking operative writing classes. You like, you wrote out the whole thing and then you were supposed to read the whole thing and um, they would make us do it in class because they knew none of us were gonna do it. So we'd sit in class and one by one read the whole thing. And it's, it was even for us, like it was sort of you read it to the whole class and the rest of the class doesn't, is not even supposed to care, but to ensure that we did it once. And it stuck with me that I did hear it differently and I would catch myself using the, the something and things like that. Um, and I think that it really like involving another sense helps like, if you can read Braille, maybe that would be cool. Like, I don't even know. But I think the idea is consuming it in more ways than one and slowing down, which you have to do, is, I think, the real win. Um, so if you can force yourself to read really, like, slowly in your head, that might get you a lot of the benefit, too. I just know I'll skim through it really quickly. And Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Lots of editors and themes do that. Definitely get that. I'm, I'm a big fan, so, yeah. Yeah. High Charm does it as well if you include the colon, but not if you miss it. Uh, or also fix me as one word colon. Um, I think pretty much every Vim theme I have, or maybe it's a plugin I have, does the to-do in any form, in anything resembling, excuse me, a comment or a doc string will do it. Um, and so I use those pretty liberally. Or like, you know, pre-commit hooks that'll tell you like, you have this many to-dos, are you sure you're done? Um, which doesn't work because you're gonna be, yeah, of course I'm sure, but you, come on, I'm a professional here. Anyone else? No? Good? All right, well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.